Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's my commercial photography website. It's a Squarespace one and I absolutely love it. They are easy to set up, they look amazing, there are hundreds of templates to choose from and they have first class customer support. If you want one too, then use this URL and the coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Okay, so we are in our meeting room, and as you can see, it's quite a small meeting room. We've only got six chairs around this fairly compact meeting table. There's a unit behind a couple of plants. Now, this is often the case when you're working in uh, offices, doing business portraits, is you've got sometimes these compact rooms or spaces to work with. So what I've done here to compensate for that is I've actually removed the softbox off of this Cirrus light and I'm directing the light into the ceiling, into the wall, because we've got a nice white wall, white ceiling here, to create a bigger softbox, effectively, a bigger illumination panel that will give me a lovely soft light onto the front side on Sophie here. We've got a white table that's gonna act as a nice reflector as well. So I'm using all of that to my advantage to create a very high key light so we're going with all these because it's all white leather chairs and white uh, furniture in here. So I'm going to go with this high key look. I've retained the umbrella on this side. Again, just to add a little bit of lighting down this side of Sophie, just to give a nice little bit of catch light. And I've angled it at such a way that there's a little bit of a graduation on the light. But broadly, the whole shot is going to be very high key, very brightly illuminated. Now, little tricks, little things. I've got Sophie where I need her. If you can just go to the pose that I showed you, Sophie. So we've got her in a sort of more commanding business-like pose, a little bit more authority to her here. And I'm going to shoot over the top of these two chairs. You see that I've angled these chairs. Now I've angled them completely uh, incorrectly as they would be for the meeting room, but for my photo, they work really well because I'm gonna shoot over the tops of these arms, the top here, so I've got something out of focus leading into Sophie, again, for this very high key look. And I'm gonna be shooting from just out the door. So often, if you don't have enough room in the meeting room to photograph the person, open the door, step outside, and you can shoot from here. So now I've got the ideal setup, may even integrate, uh, introduce a little bit of the plant into the edge of the shot as well, just to break up the white a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. That's the setup. My light powers on this one, fairly simple. 6.3 now on this one because I'm bouncing it into the wall. 4.5 on the Broly. I'm shooting at about 100 millimeter on this 70 to 200 lens. And I'm shooting at F4 now. Still giving me a little bit of shallow depth of field on the lead into these chairs, but enough depth of field to make sure that Sophie's nice and sharp. Hopefully this will make for a really lovely business portrait. Okay, so framing up Sophie there. That's perfect, and let's take a look. And there we go, we've got that very high key look to the shot, which is exactly what I wanted. Leading in over the arms of the chairs, very soft lighting overall on Sophie, very neutral, very uh, clean and simple. Little bit of that plant coming in there that I can remove easily if I wanted to, um, or I can add some more in. So I'm just gonna try a few variations on that now. Going slightly wider, brings the plant back in a little bit more on the chairs. That's it. I'm going to go in tighter crop now by zooming in slightly. Just change my position over the top of that chair. Sophie's looking fantastic. There we go. Let's have a look at that again. So yeah, that high key shot is working really well. Again, we've got a wider version, closer version, hair lighting, everything working really nicely there. So yeah, really happy with that and really simple. So even though the kit comes with a soft box and with the Broly, obviously different lighting scenarios may mean that you don't want to use them. We could have put the reflector on there to direct the light a little bit more directional. But in this instance, I've used it actually bare bulb so that some of the light hits up to the ceiling here as well as some of the light directing that way. So, you know, you can use these lamps in a number of different ways to get the best result. So that is our indoor tests done. And very, very pleased with how these lights have performed. 
very pleased with how Sophie's performed as well. So well done to Sophie. And uh, we'll see what's coming up in the next series of tests. Okay, so we are going to do a quick demo with an outdoor shoot, just using a sine waver electric battery pack converter so that we can power this independently. Sophie's kindly carrying my camera at the moment. And I'm just gonna do a simple single light setup where I photograph Sophie against this steel wall. Now, obviously this is a studio pack. It runs off the mains, but with the, uh, with the right battery pack, you can uh, power these things outdoors as well. So I'm just gonna plug that into there. Okay, so we've got power here. Now, previously we were using these lights at low powers indoors so I could use shallow depth of field. But here I need to overpower the daylight. So I'm gonna ramp this right up to power nine. Obviously we can go up to power 10. I've got the modeling lamp switched off because you don't wanna drain the battery pack unnecessarily so we're going to go to power 9.4 let's say as a starting point sophie thank you kindly for holding that camera now sophie i'd like you to go here against this wall or say wall against this steel door and just position yourself in a pose here lights coming from that direction so if you can just look slightly over that way it's going to be a very simple graphic sort of shot just using a one light setup it's going to give us a little bit of a a hard shadow on the edge of Sophie and a bit of a silver glare off the door. And this will let me get up to probably around F11, F16 to eliminate most of the daylight. And let's have a look. And just get you to move a fraction that way, please, darling. That's it. Good. And we're going to line that up there. I look into that direction. Focus. Take the shot. Um, fantastic. Let's go again. There we go. I'm just going to move that in a little bit closer. A little bit more light on there. So really simple, single light setup. One brolly, one light, shining onto Sophie, outdoors with an external power supply. And here we go. Fantastic. One more, here we go. And just finish off one looking at me as well, please, Sophie. That's it, good. And again, lovely. Okay, that's it, Sophie. Thank you very much uh, for modeling for us today. Um, was that all right for you? It was great. Oh, good, you do, she talks, you see? You haven't heard her talk much, but she does talk. Um, right, so that was our um, tests and uh, reviews on using the Cirrus lighting for some portrait, business portraits and different outdoor portrait uh, setups. And um, what we wanna do on our next test is test the Cirrus lights for this super fast flash duration that Broncolor are famous for, especially with their Scoro packs and the Move packs. Now remember also with this uh, Cirrus video, you can win this Cirrus lighting kit, okay? If you're watching this video at the right time, if you're watching it too late, then obviously you'll miss out on that opportunity, but you may benefit from these great tutorials we're giving you anyway. So if uh, you want to win this kit, stay tuned for the next video and we'll give you details on how you can win this kit. Uh, and in the next video, as I say, we're going to test the flash duration speed, that super fast flash duration that Broncolor are famous for. And we're going to see how these Cirrus lights perform in those super fast flash duration tests. So we'll see you on the next one.